What's good? What's good? This is Stiko. This is Stiko, the podcast. Hey, Mira, I want to say thank you. And, and, and if you're watching, specifically you, I want to say thank you. You know why? You subscribe to this channel. You like what you see. Press like. Si te gusta lo que mira, press like. I'm going to say it in Spanish or so in English too every once in a while. And uh, drop a comment in the comment section. You know, I interact with mi gente. You know, aquí estamos. Aquí estamos. We're watching. And also, also share this video. You got social media platforms. Don't play. It ain't just YouTube. You got Facebook, number one. Uh, Moco, number two. <laughs> Y'all know what it is, man. Hit the notification bell to get notified. And let's get into this one. Jada Stevens. Mira, before we go into that, check out the website. R2DREC.com. You see the merchandise? Looking fresh. Boy, looking good. But let's go back to Jada Stevens. Now, look, ya te dije una vez, I'm not going to say it again. If you get time, Google her and what you do on your time is your time. But hey, mira, I'm not here to judge, homie or female, whatever. I'm, I'm not here to judge. I'm here to say I watch these interviews and I'm interested in, in, in certain situations, like especially the adult entertainment business. The reason why I say that is because have you always wondered what happens to these people? Like, do they still continue that path and low key they're no more longer in the limelight? Or do they have other business adventures? Who knows? But let's go into this one specifically because I saw a recent interview with the one and only Alexis Texas interviewing Jada Stevens, right? Um, now, it's a great interview. It's private talk, late night, whatever you want to call it. But one thing I got out of the interview, Jada Stevens, she's a hustler. A hustler. Because do y'all remember when the pandemic hit? And mira, don't lie to me right now. No me gusta mentirosos. I don't like those. Be honest. When the pandemic hit, did you get on your grind trying to figure out what to do? What am I going to do next? What's my next move? Or did you say, hey, man, I'm a little worried. Un poquito. I'm going to figure this out. Because... I was one of the people that, you know, when the pandemic hit, I'll be honest with y'all, I didn't record much, I didn't do much, I stayed home and watched TV. I watched episodes like, I can't remember the name of this one specifically, where, when these celebrities get to watch something and I was interested in what they were watching. It, lame, you know, pero, um, yeah, so in this interview, she talks about how she was already thinking about the next move, like, she ended up being the, the star to becoming the person behind the camera and shooting other people. So she, now she got a production team now. That's pretty dope because, you know, what better way to get involved when you already know the business? See, you got to respect that. And I think she got a dispensary or something that has to do with, you know, smoking. And she's involved in that. And it's beautiful to see that it's not just one thing. It's multiple things. And this is something we can learn from, right? Because I think that sometimes when um, we get we get stuck at doing one thing. And the reason why I say stuck, because you get comfortable. You get so comfortable to a point that you realize, like, maybe this is not just for me. Maybe I need to do something else. Maybe I, I need to tap into something else. But you never know until something happens. Like when the pandemic hit, that happened, right? It hit everybody. So when it hit everybody, you kind of like, uh, what do I do next? Or what's my next move? Or um, so I just sit back and hope that something happens or something changes. And with her specifically, she just got on her grind. You you know, sometimes that's what you have to do. You just got to grind it out. You know, you shoot a few things. She went back into the club scene. Um, and like I said, she got multiple businesses, right? And... Um, Trust me, it gets very saucy with the, the, the interview, man. They talk about everything. Some things I just, I'm, I'm just like, Alexis be a asking questions. Yeah, you know, she be asking, you know, you, the, who's, you know, you like this or you like that. Um, and it, it really falls back on the, on the person, you know, answering the question, you know. But like I said, one thing that I took from that interview is that no matter what happens, you could be on your, on, your, on on the very, very bottom and there's ways for you to climb up to the top, the top of the game. And one of the things is that I do remember her saying like when she didn't get certain awards, it would bother her because it was like, OK, how come I didn't get that award for that? 
but at the end of the day, they don't mean nothing because you know who you are. So do you need a trophy? Do you need a trophy for you to, 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 to somebody could certify you for something? You really don't. Because if you know what you're doing and you know your value and you know your worth, you shouldn't be worried about stuff like that. So in this interview, it's definitely something that I, I really enjoyed watching and, and getting a chance to peep game. Because like I said, at the end of the day, I've always wondered when, when, you, go, when you go into that kind of specific industry, like what happens? Like, do these people disappear and it's like they're no longer here? One of the things, too, that she also said that her OnlyFans has taken over and now in the industry, there is no mega superstar. And I started thinking about it like, man, she got a point on that one, because when you think about the music hip hop, you know, how they talk about certain art, certain females or they use certain females in their videos. Back then, there were mega superstars in that in the adult industry. Now, these days, it's like there's, you know, Julano, Julio, lo, lo que sea, you know, Julana, and, you know, they're doing the OnlyFans together, you know? And they're doing it, and they become some kind of recognition, but it ain't like what it used to be back in the days. So, is the, is the question I want to ask y'all, is the adult industry pretty much over? Because if OnlyFans have taken over that far and got themselves involved that deep in the game, What's the point of even having an industry or having like little industries? Because now you could be your own, you could be your own boss at this point, you know? And that's one thing she talked about on that one. And like I said, I'm going to drop the, the, the link in my description so, so y'all could check it out. And y'all let me know, be honest. Like the only fans just took over the adult industry and now there is not really like an adult industry except for maybe some of the big platforms, but for the most part, it, they're very independent women out there doing it, even men. So, hey, to each and their own, I'm here. I'm not here to judge. Mira, you know, I didn't see nothing. Hey, but look, great interview. Y'all check it out. The link will be in my description. And also, subscribe to this channel right now. I don't even know why you hesitate. Subscribe to the channel. Si te gusta lo que mira, press like. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Also, share this video on your social media platforms and hit the notification bell to get notified. And also, visit the website, r2drec.com. You want to purchase the new merch? Si pote sucio. <laughs> now, y'all check out the website. I also got new music coming out. I appreciate y'all tuning in. And always remember, have peace in your heart. Have faith. And never give up. All right. One.